What do we know of the Jewish claim that beneath Al Masjid Al Aqsa, the Aqsa Mosque, lays the ruins of the Temple of Solomon, or so they claim? According to Jewish tradition, the one who laid the foundations for the temple was David, Prophet Dawood, and the one who actually built it was his son Suleiman or Solomon. The temple was destroyed for the first time by the Babylonian ruler Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC. They supposedly rebuilt it years later, but was then yet again destroyed at the hands of Titus, the son of the Roman Emperor Vespasian in the year 70 CE. And so that the Jews would not uh, forget the temple and so that it would remain alive in their memories, the rabbis introduced rituals and ceremonies that every Jew performs in order to remember the temple and its destruction. At the time of birth, at the time of death, at the time of marriage, when painting the house, there's always a ceremony to remember the temple. Now today, the Jewish claim is that Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is built on top of the ruins of this temple. And Al-Aqsa Mosque is currently being controlled by the Israeli army for the ever-increasing use of Israeli settlers and for the preparation of the building of the temple. This means that there is, of course, no alternative to destroying Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in order to rebuild the temple, and that the kingdom of the Jews cannot be established until that happens, because to them Israel is nothing without Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is nothing without the Temple of Solomon. Now, from our perspective, the very first step to the dismantling of this allegation is to note that Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa was built hundreds of years before the very birth of Prophet Solomon. You see, scholars, they have three different views about the identity of the first to construct Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. I'm going to present in chronological order. The first theory suggests that angels initially constructed Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca, followed by the building of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Palestine 40 years later. The second opinion is that Prophet Adam was the pioneer of Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca, and then afterwards he established Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa again 40 years, 40 year gap. According to the third opinion, the initial foundations of Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca were already laid there, and they were raised by Prophet Ibrahim, who then went over to Palestine to construct Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa also 40 years later. So, what does that tell you? It tells you that even if we were to take the third opinion in that the first to have built Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa was Prophet Ibrahim, it's clear that he predates Prophet Sulaiman by centuries. So Muslims argue, how can the claim be made that Al-Aqsa Mosque is built above the remains of a temple of Solomon, a Solomon who came into being many hundreds of years after the original builder, Abraham? Having said that, Prophet Sulaiman Solomon did in fact play a significant role in the history of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, though not by initially constructing it as we have established, but rather by renovating it, by enhancing it. Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they've said, فَالْمَسْجِدُ الْأَقْصَى كَانَ مِنْ عَهْدِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ لَكِنَّ سُلَيْمَانَ بَنَاهُ بِنَاءً عَظِيمًا He said, Al-Aqsa Mosque has existed since the time of Abraham, peace be upon him. But Sulaiman was the one who rebuilt it magnificently. So Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa had already been a place of worship long before Sulaiman's era. And the building which he did eventually rebuild and refurbish was none other than Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa itself, not a separate place of worship that we need to search for beneath it. This was also confirmed by the Christian historian Ibn Al-Abri who died in the year 1286, who said in the fourth year of his reign, Solomon began to build Baytul Maqdis, which is known as Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So the Temple of Solomon is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. But nevertheless, certain Jewish groups who don't believe this continue to argue otherwise, as they try to justify risky excavations beneath the Masjid which has consistently yielded zero evidence of a colossal structure that once apparently occupied the space as described in the Bible. In 1961, Israeli authorities claimed to have discovered what they termed the Stables of Solomon. 
they enlisted Kathleen Kenyon, who is a distinguished British archaeologist, to conduct a thorough investigation in Palestine near Al Masjid al Aqsa. After six years of extensive excavations in Jerusalem, Kenyon concluded that these so called stables were totally impractical for holding horses, debunking the initial claims. And then periodically, items such as stones or tablets are unearthed during excavations and uh, promptly presented to the world as evidence of the temple's remnants beneath Al-Aqsa Mosque. But then again, these findings are discovered to be fraudulent forgeries. An example of this is the Jehoash inscription discovered in 2003. It's a stone tablet. It bears Hebrew inscription that mirrored the biblical description of Solomon's temple. And it seemed to be, initially at least, a very significant archaeological find. But then subsequent examinations revealed it to be a forgery to fetch millions for museum collectors and to bolster Zionist convictions about the temple's historical authenticity. And of course, you've got the Jewish archaeologist Israel Finkelstein, who stated that the archaeologist did not find any archaeological evidence indicating that the temple actually existed i.e. as described in the Bible, and he regarded the idea of the existence of the temple as a mere myth that did not exist, and that the writers of the Torah in the third century added stories that did not happen. Putting all of this aside for a moment, even if remnants of a different structure was to be unearthed at any point from beneath al masjid al-Aqsa, that still wouldn't pose an issue for Muslims. It simply would be remnants of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa of back then that has been restored and refurbished all throughout the ages. It's important to remember that the terms temple, mosque, masjid, house should not distract us from the fact that Prophet Sulaiman was a messenger of Allah and that these names are in reference to the same thing essentially. Places dedicated to the worship of the one Allah alone. And regardless of all of this, Anything of the construction of Prophet Dawood or Sulaiman or Prophet Ibrahim before them, our belief is that we, the Muslims today, hold the strongest claim to it. After all, these prophets, according to the Quran, were Muslims, submitters to Allah, worshippers of Him alone, who never committed idolatry or obscene sins, as is attributed to them. It is the Muslims today who are upon their religion. Muslims who do not associate partners with Allah like them. The Muslims who honor all of the prophets, Moses and Jesus and those before them, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in them all. We do not deem them as mere kings as others do. We therefore lay claim to these prophets. We lay claim to the places of worship that they built. And we lay claim to being their successors in religion until the end of time.